Let's try out yet another question from MIT 2006 Integration B. If you guys want to check out the very entertaining video, I've included a link down below in the, in the description section so you guys can check out the video if you wish to. But the purpose of this video is to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of arc sine or inverse sine of cosine of x dx. And this looks very daunting at first. What, what do we even start with? Huh, this looks hard. And whenever something looks hard, you want to, you don't want to just stare at the question. That's usually not going to do you anything. You want to think simple and build the steps up toward the solution by doing something that you think you know. You may be able to make some manipulations or some crazy idea may pop out of your head and you may be able to evaluate this. And arc sine of cosine of x, why don't we let, let's start with finding indefinite integral. Why don't we let indefinite integral be x times arc sine of cosine of x. Obviously, that's not going to be the answer, but it's close enough. And why is it close enough? When you differentiate, so when you differentiate x times arc sine of cosine of x, there's a reason i multiplied by x, you get derivative of x times arc sine of cosine of x, and derivative of x is 1, so that goes away, plus x times the derivative of arc sine of cosine of x. So obviously this entire expression is not equal to arc sine of cosine of x, but it's pretty close because you are still getting arc sine of cosine of x out of it. But since we have this, why don't we continue on with this expression? Let's try evaluate what the derivative of arc sine of cosine of x is. Well, Differentiating arc sine gets you 1 over square root of 1 minus the quantity inside. So cosine, and you're going to square the quantity. So 1 minus cosine squared of x times, now you got to differentiate by chain rule cosine of x. So negative sine of x. And we have something very interesting going on. 1 minus cosine squared of x is same thing as sine squared of x. So taking square root gets you sine of x. So this entire expression is 1 over sine of x times negative sine of x or just negative 1. So we have something very, very interesting and something very helpful that happened. When you differentiate it, you get arc sine of cosine of x, arc sine of cosine of x plus x times minus 1 or just minus x. So minus x. So our answer is not x times arc sine of cosine of x because when you differentiate it, you have minus x that's added to it. But once we add plus x squared over 2 to this expression, we have it. We have the indefinite integral. And you may say, why? Well, indefinite integral is the expression you have to differentiate to get arc sine of cosine of x. And when you differentiate this entire thing, you get arc sine of cosine of x because differentiating x times arc sine of cosine of x gets you arc sine of cosine of x minus x and differentiating x squared over 2 gets you plus x and plus x and minus x cancel out leaving arc sine of cosine of x. So we have found indefinite integral. So we want to go from 0 to pi over 2 and plugging 0 in obviously since you have 0 times something and 0 squared over 2 that's not going to that's going to disappear out into thin air so we all we have to do is plug in pi over 2 so we have pi over 2 times arc sine of cosine of pi over 2 plus pi over 2 squared this pi squared over 4 dividing by 2 gets you pi squared over 8 and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 arc sine of 0 is 0 so pi over 2 times 0 is 0 so this entire expression simplifies to pi squared over 8 so we have our answer integral from 0 to pi over 2 of arc sine of cosine of x dx is pi squared over 8